to pick up the phone. Don't try and shy away from it. Don't close your eyes and bury your head and hope that it goes away. Mm. Pick up the phone and, and action it. Call whoever it is, chat to them, do whatever you need to do, but uh, and you know, tackle it head on. So joining me on the call today, I've got James Bonford from Right Click IT. Welcome to the call, James. Thank you so much for having me, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Ah, no problem, no problem. Maybe start by telling us a bit about who you are, what you do. Yeah, so my business is uh, an IT company and we focus on uh, IT infrastructure. So that's uh, you know, email systems, file systems, security systems and that sort of thing, as well as providing help desk and just general general help for businesses uh, when it comes to uh, the IT thing. You know, it's, it's someone to call on when you're not, you're not quite sure about, uh, about something or you're looking to buy something or looking to implement a new CRM solution or something like that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what, uh, what we do. Right, you'd be uh, pretty busy with this whole uh, lockdown and uh, people moving into telecommuting. It, it has uh, increased our workload uh, exponentially. Um, so it's, uh, it's not only people buying laptops and, uh, and looking to work from home and, and that sort of thing. It's, it's also uh, thinking outside the square. So there's been a lot of, a lot of thinking. So my head's quite sore because uh, <laughs> we're, all, we're, coming, we're trying to come up with solutions uh, to help people uh, over, overcome and, and work from home, et cetera. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's been a challenge. So, so obviously with the, this change, it's sort of, you know, someone said it the other day, we've, we've adopted technology, the equivalent of five years of technology in about three months. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's really forced a lot of businesses' hand. So a lot of had to, uh, had to adapt and they've, they've had to put in place a whole lot of stuff that they were putting off. Um, uh, so it, it, has, it has meant a, a lot of big changes for businesses. Yeah, right. So tell me, you're a business owner yourself. What are you doing to navigate the environment? So, I mean, um, one of the biggest things for us is that we, we had moved a lot of businesses to cloud, including our own. Uh, so the, the, the systems that we use, um, phone systems, uh, email systems, everything is pretty much in the cloud. And uh, um, all my guys, uh, as soon as we, as soon as, uh, we were advised that uh, people should work from home as much as possible, that's something that almost comes naturally from an IT point of view. Um, we have an office to uh, be, um, you know, to be around each other so that we can, we can have easy conversations, et cetera. But uh, um, it's not uncommon for us to work from home uh, or work from a remote location and, uh, and talk via um, instant messaging systems and, uh, and email, et cetera. So it, uh, it, it wasn't that big a stretch for us. Yeah. Um, as I know it was for some other businesses that do require that um, mm. um, interaction, face-to-face -face interaction. So uh, for us, it wasn't as big a change, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly been a challenge from a motivational point of view for my staff there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think people didn't appreciate, like, it's nice to be able to telecommute, but if you get put in isolation, there's a lot of office banter, there's a lot of uh, interaction that occurs that really isn't sort of formal, right? And, yeah, uh, and I, th I think that's the hardest with, with so many people is, is that even if you're not, even if you're not involved in, in that, that, that sort of banter and, that, and that's those sort of conversations, to have it around you is, is still, um, I don't know, it's a human thing, isn't it? It's, it's to have that that interaction with people that, uh, mm. that, we, that we do crave. So look, obviously everyone knows what Zoom is now. And if we went back four months ago, only about 40% of the, the world knew. Um, what are the opportunities you see for business right now? Um, well, I suppose it's, it's one of the biggest ones, I suppose, is uh, to, be, to, to adapt to change um, because change has been forced upon us. Um, yeah. So many businesses in so many different areas have had to change um, and that means a restaurant moving to delivery only food mm. um, a, um, a signage company uh, again uh, moving to uh, moving to um, other other work other um, building work I suppose or something along those lines yeah um, it's thinking outside the square and we're, we're really having to think outside the square with a lot of them because we are looking at some extremes we're looking at some companies and some businesses yeah. that are ultra busy and then we have some that on the other hand that are just you know dried up overnight because they're reliant on uh, big crowds mm. and uh and and sporting events or events in general and uh right it's being able to figure out something else another income stream but um i suppose it's a bit like a rubber band we're all going 
sort of out of lockdown now, we're coming back to work and things are starting to normalise. Do you see it going back to how it was before lockdown? Um, I, I don't see it going completely uh, to how it was before. I certainly think we, it'll ease off. Um, but I think a lot of the biggest a lot of the biggest changes that we've had enable people to see that we can adapt and we can work uh, differently. Uh, yeah. So I think that 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 will actually you know, enable companies and businesses to embrace change and and do things a little bit differently uh, going forward. So so on a personal level, what lessons have you taken out of this whole uh, sort of uh, trauma? Let's call it. <laughs> I uh, I have a newfound respect for teachers. Uh, so I have two kids and um, to homeschool them and work full time at the same time yeah. uh, has been an astronomical challenge. So there has been so many times where I've just said, you know what, just jump on your iPad, just jump on your switch, watch TV, watch YouTube, because I, I, I can't help right now. So entertain yourself while, uh, while dad works for a little bit. And uh, yeah, so, um, I certainly don't envy teachers having to uh, having to manage manage kids that much. It's been I've never yeah. seen so many joyful parents sending their kids back to school. It's like it's so hilarious. It's, it's like it's so true. Like they're out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, so let me ask you, just on a, on a on a bigger note, the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Actually, it was it was before I'd started in business. So um, I mentioned to uh, to somebody who who um, had run his business for, for quite some time that I was going out. And he, the business advice that he gave was pick up the phone. Yeah. So if something was happening, if uh, you got an email, if it's a good thing or a bad thing, it didn't matter what it was, but the, the, the advice was to pick up the phone. Don't try and shy away from it. Don't close your eyes and bury your head and hope that it goes away. Mm. Pick up the phone and, and action it. Call whoever it is, chat to them, do whatever you need to do, but uh, and you know, tackle it head on. Uh, and I think that was probably the best piece of advice that I've, I've ever had. And I've, I've, I use that frequently. Yeah, it's funny because we all get taught no news is good news. And in reality, if you don't pick up the phone and communicate with people, they think the worst. <laughs> That's it. Exactly right. Yeah. This whole idea of um, keeping the communication channel open and being proactive and, and not being scared of speaking to people is actually, it helps people a lot, right? Yeah, especially now, like a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are anxious. A lot of people, uh, we're, we were facing a lot of unknowns. We're still facing a lot of unknowns. Yep. So it's always good to have that conversation with somebody just to reassure them that things are going to be okay and that, um, you know, yep. it's, uh, it's we, we can get through it together. Yeah, fantastic. So let me ask you your favourite book. My favourite book is uh, probably The E-Myth. Um, so I can relate to it quite a, quite a bit, having an entrepreneurial seizure and uh, and thinking that I can go into business and uh, and do things um, and do things better and uh, uh, with with my IT skills and uh, running a business is I suppose it it's very similar to IT, yeah. whereby um, you know there there are certain certain aspects that are similar and so that's given me a little bit of an edge, mm -hmm. but running a business and, and starting a business and, and being in business has really, um, has really taught, taught me a lesson from, from that point of view that it's not, um, it's great to have that, uh, that entre entrepreneurial uh, thought, um, yeah. but you, you do need to actually work on the business as well as in the business. Yeah, I think uh, like obviously our business is all based around that and we meet so many people that are experts at what they do. And they're self-employed and self-employed is technically a business but in reality it's a job and, that's right yeah you're both. and it's fine i mean there's that's nothing wrong with that it's just that i don't think people realize that that doesn't build value into a business it just brings cash in and uh, i think when you've got a choice and you start to realize there is two paths you can take here mm. taking this one of working on the business and building a, an asset of value um, actually has a lot of benefit in the long term absolutely and, th and that was one of the one of the things that I took away from it as well was is that I wanted to build something that ran for me rather than needed me. Yeah, fantastic. The last question for you, James, the number one piece of advice you'd give to someone in business right now? Um, the number one piece of advice is probably that this isn't forever. 
<laughs> so um, now we're not talking about the kids homeschooling. We're talking about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> No, the kids went back on Tuesday, so I'm very happy about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I, sp I suppose it, it, it gives us all an opportunity to, to think outside the box. Yeah. So if you're in a business that yeah, is highly affected uh, because it does rely so much on, um, uh, on crowds of people and on, on that sort of thing, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good opportunity to actually um, look outside the box and work out, well, how can I, um, how can I get ahead? Uh, what can I do to to um, to change this business around, or, or give me another income stream, or, or work on it that way? That's probably the, the biggest thing, and that it's not forever, and that we will semi get back to normal eventually. And yeah, that's probably. Yeah, I think you're right. It's interesting when people sort of pause and just rethink and relook at what they're currently doing. They can probably do a better job of it. They can trim away some of the unnecessary items and they can really focus in on where the value is, yeah? Absolutely. That's a yeah, great way of putting it. Yeah, fantastic. All right, James, thanks so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed having a chat. Uh, thank goodness the kids are back at school, huh? <laughs> My pleasure. I really enjoyed being here. Thanks again, David. Yeah, awesome. Cheers.